Hi everyone, it's Fitz with the Walk and Talk pre-Oklahoma as we get over here by the football field. Uh, very interesting, you know, Coach Kleiman was fairly emphatic that Skyler wouldn't play and it kind of lined up with what we initially thought. You got the off week after this Oklahoma game and then uh, Iowa State, so maybe you want to save him for that. Yeah, he was he's pretty sure he's not playing, which honestly it flies in the face of some of the things that have been told so far so uh, I'm still going to be surprised if he doesn't play particularly in some form um, at all but I, I'm still if I was a betting man I'd still put my money on him starting but maybe it's gamesmanship and maybe Chris Kleiman actually knows more than me huh that's a possibility uh, I, it's hard to gauge this team right now they know they didn't play well they didn't play well they they weren't as aggressive as they have been in the previous games they didn't seem to have the want to, which is a little disturbing. You know, they get to play 12 regular season games, and, you know, as coaches say, you'd think they'd be ready for that, but they weren't. They didn't play well. Um, boy, it's breezy in Kansas. It's a shocker. It's all. But for some reason, this group always seems locked in on Oklahoma. We'll see if that continues for a third season, even if they lose. I mean, making this a competitive game keeping it 10 or fewer to cover the spread, those type of things. But I, I, I like the way they match up with Oklahoma. I have uh, gone back and looked at some of those games. They just don't seem to fear Oklahoma. And it, it's really funny to me. They almost have more of a, I don't want to say they're afraid of Oklahoma State, but they are almost more timid with Oklahoma State than Oklahoma, and nobody can make sense of that for me. I can't sort that out. It doesn't make a lick of sense to me, but that's the way this team seems to function. They, they were very locked in on Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler hasn't been as good, even though his numbers look okay. He's not throwing the ball down the field very much, um, or like he did last season. I don't know if that's something going on with their offense or the way teams are defending him, but I know this, Joe Klanderman had a brilliant game plan last year throwing him curveballs late in the game. He didn't have time to adjust. The key to that is not letting him get away, not letting him, you know, build that four touchdown lead heading into the middle of the third quarter or whatever. You got to have enough time to come back in case they did barely last year. I'm not going to say K-State wins this game. I, I'm, I'm going to say that it'll be a good game, an entertaining game. I don't think Oklahoma's the same brand of football team it has been for whatever reason. So, hey, it's Zach Carlson right there, somewhere right there. Um, we'll see. We'll see if uh, K-State is up to this task. This is not an essential victory for K-State in any stretch of the imagination. But getting this victory puts them right back on track, gets them right back into the sink of um, playing ahead of the curve, so to speak. I had a 4-2 and two coming out of the Iowa State game. That's all very tangible. But so it's five and one. But they just have to take care of business. 2.30 kickoff, supposed to be a little rainy maybe on Saturday, um, but it's gonna be cooler, so it won't be the, the lobster pot that you all sat in two weeks ago with Nevada. Well, that's it for the walk and talk. Um, it's a pretty laid back press conference, to be real honest. Low key, Chris Kleiman was kind of measured in his words more than usual. Uh, but he sure did want to send a message that Skyler wasn't playing. So we'll trust him. Skyler, Skyler's not playing. We'll, we'll go with that.